Hello there, art friends. In this episode of Sketchy Watercolor Artist, I wanted to share a few tips. Three tips, in fact, uh, that I think if you incorporate into your own watercolor paintings, uh, you will greatly improve them. Tip number one, since it is right there on the screen already and so it's most evident, you just saw me using a spray bottle. That is very important particularly because I'm working in a very dry environment. So working on such a large paper, you can't always rely on wetting down the paper with, with brushes and keeping everything as wet as you need to. And watercolor is all about moisture control on the page. So if you don't have one already, get one. See if it helps your work. Tip number two. Do preliminary sketches. I showed you two, uh, two flowers in the beginning, and those were of a different flower, but I wanted to test out the concept I had in my mind, figure out basic color and value patterns, um, and then I ended up going with a different flower, but the sketches proved really, really helpful in understanding some of the things that I wanted to achieve in the overall piece, which you can kind of see translate over, but whether or not it's, you know, a direct copy, it's definitely not. You're still building up a particular set of skills uh, in the sketch that you carry over into the main piece. So don't underestimate the power of practicing a particular thing before you go to do it for a final piece. It, it will always be helpful. Last tip, and I saved the coolest one for last. I've got a handful of watercolor textbooks, and I, I was going through it and I, I noticed an interesting quote from a watercolor painter where he said the most successful, well, I think it was often most successful. I don't think you have to do this, but it was, it was often the most successful watercolor paintings are completed in about 20 to 30 minutes. And it got me to thinking that I spend too much time on my work. And the reason for that is because I'm not necessarily, one, planning, and two, just allowing the watercolor process to take over. So some of the beauty in watercolor comes from letting the water and paint interact naturally. And so using plenty of paint, using plenty of water on the paper goes a long way to achieving a particular painterly effect with watercolor. And so that's what I tried to set out to start doing a little bit more of. And I did achieve that on this one. Uh, this is only probably legitimately 30 minutes worth of brush to paper. But the sleight of hand there is just because you're doing the painting, you know, loose and quickly, that does not account for the time that I spent planning, having the paint pools set up. Um, even doing the sketches, which helped me to nail down the colors that I needed to build up in advance. And I didn't include the sketch here either, which the sketch was somewhat more elaborate than I have been doing lately. But with this particular flower, it, it really required some proportion, measurement, and, and planning. Aside from that, I really strove to just follow the basic kind of one, two, three step watercolor pattern here where I got everything pretty much blocked in color wise and then tried to focus on the next largest improvements that needed to be made using um, progressively thicker and thicker paint. I knew more or less the 
general colors and values that I wanted to put in, but doing it somewhat progressively and taking the time in between layers so as to let them dry, uh, it kind of helped to keep me from being impatient. So if you don't let the, the page dry out in between, you know, going over it, you don't necessarily see the interactions that happen as the paint like fully dries out. And it was really, really helpful in this case to let it dry out completely. And then when I went back over the petals with brighter yellow, it really popped and it also stayed where I wanted it because I had let the background dry out completely. And then when I let the petals dry back out, I went back into the background to darken that up too. I think it's ironic how important it is not to rush, and yet that quote was essentially, do the painting as quick as possible. There is a huge element of work quickly and efficiently, but do the planning too. And part of the watercolor process is letting it dry. So even though you're not painting the whole time, there's still lots of time there to reflect on what's happening. And for me, at least, I can be pretty impatient. It's, it's, help, it's a helpful medium for me to use because it forces me to take a step back. Otherwise, it will just suck. So for me, taking that time really nails down my ideas as, as much as anything else, uh, let alone that the paint requires it. So if you're unfamiliar with the flower itself, this is a lady slipper. It is a type of orchid. And one of the cooler types too, that little bulb in the middle is hollow and fills up with water. And then flies or bugs will smell it and find it interesting and they'll go in there to get a little sip and die. Orchids are fascinating flowers. Super tricky to grow. I've grown quite a few myself. I don't think I ever had lady slippers though. But they are cool. Especially these ones with the long dangly petals. They, they very much lend themselves to artistic endeavors. One thing I would add here is you can get accurate colors with watercolor. Accurate to the reference, I mean to say. But I think more often than not, you want to shoot for being close, but then paying attention to the color relationships that you're creating. Because it tends to be relative in most cases anyway. So it's not important to be dead on color wise but what I was doing was more paying attention to the value and color relationship differences that popped out as I was painting this and I'm super happy with how this one came out that spray bottle was definitely essential for the size of this sheet and the dryness of the environment that I'm working in it, I think without it, it would not have worked. And it is a large sheet too. It's 15 inches by 11. So it's a nice size to be on the wall or something like that. If you're a orchid fan, I suppose. <laughs> Just doing some final background touch up here. Pretty much done with the flowers. I don't want to mess with the petals. I really like how, especially that center flower, the petals like bounce. And I didn't follow the reference very much exactly. I kind of took the general idea of those petals and tried to make a design out of them that I liked, which I think sometimes when you're painting, like following a reference too close can be detrimental. And it's really better to focus on coming up with a nice design but anyway happy painting friends <laughs>